In this question, we're told about something called the Fibonacci sequence. And we're asked a number of questions about this discrete time system that will likely involve the Z-transform. So we're told that the Fibonacci sequence is found by adding the two numbers preceding the current output. So for example, 3 is equal to 1 plus 2, 13 is equal to 5 plus 8, etc. So each sequence or each number in the Fibonacci sequence is the sum of the two previous numbers. And the question is asking for a difference equation. So if you imagine the system to have an input x and an output f, then the question really is find f in terms of itself and in terms of x. Now, you can imagine that there's not really an input to this sequence because it just starts 1, 1, 2, 3, 5. So it needs some kind of initialization pulse. So x of n really is, it consists of zeros and an initialization pulse at zero. So that's the same as saying a discrete impulse. So almost by definition, the output will be the impulse response. So f of n is the impulse response. And should look something like what we're given in the question. 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, etc. And the question is asking for an expression for f of n, a difference equation. So f of n in terms of previous values of f, so f of n minus 1, n minus 2. So f of n, that's our current input, sorry, current output. And f of n minus 1 is our previous output. It's the, the output at the previous sample, so it's the previous output. And f of n minus 2 is the output before the previous output. And we know that the Fibonacci sequence consists of numbers which are the sum of the output or the previous output and the output before that. So really, that's the kind of expression we want. f of n equals f of n minus 1 plus f of n minus 2. But because it's an initially re relaxed system, there's no um, uh, outputs before n equals 0, we need to initialize it so we can initialize it by adding the input, x of n. But the input, as we just said, is just the impulse, delta. So we can write our final answer for the difference equation like this. f of n equals f of n minus 1 plus f of n minus 2 plus a discrete impulse. And it's perfectly OK to leave it as x of n or to replace it with the delta function. Both should be OK for the difference equation. Now part two, now part two asks us to show that the general expression for f of n can be expressed by this expression. Now this is no longer a difference equation. It doesn't involve f of n minus 1, f of n minus 2. It's just f of n in terms of n. So we need somehow to convert this difference equation. And our secret weapon in instances like this is the z transform. So we can find f of z, and then we can use 
So we can find f of z from f of n using the table of z transforms, and then we can use the same table to then rewrite f of n. Effectively, we're using the z transform and the inverse z transform to rewrite f of n in terms of n rather than in terms of the previous output and the output before that. So I'm going to start by taking the z transform of each of these terms. Because it's a linear process, I'm allowed to do that. So the z transform of f of n is simply f of z. f of n minus 1 is z to the power minus 1 multiplied by f of z. And f of n minus 2 is z to the power minus 2 times f of z. And the z transform of an impulse is simply 1. Now we can collect all the terms with f of z on the left-hand side. So I have f of z into 1 minus <clears throat> z to the minus 1 minus z to the minus 2 equals 1. So f of z can be written as 1 over 1 minus z to the minus 1 minus z to the minus 2. And that we can write, if we multiply it by z squared over z squared to get rid of these negative powers, that will give me f of z equals z squared divided by z squared minus z minus 1. And that looks good because we can try to factorize the denominator and then use partial fractions. So if we look at the denominator, it doesn't look like that's an easy one to factorize, but we can still, we can still find the roots nevertheless. So we can say z squared minus z minus 1 equals 0. So using the quadratic formula, z equals 1 plus or minus square root of 1 plus 4 over 2. So that will give you 1 plus minus square root of 5 over 2. So we can factorize f of z using our two roots. So we can say a equals 1 plus square root of 5 over 2, and b equals 1 minus square root of 5 over 2. Just to keep things nice and simple, we can then say f of z is z squared divided by z minus our first root and z minus our second root. The reason we factorize is so that we can then use partial fractions. But we can't do that when we have the power of the numerator or the order of the numerator equal to the order of the denominator. So what we do is we find f of z divided by z just to reduce the order of the numerator. So now that's much easier to deal with. So what we want to do is to simplify that using partial fractions. So what we want is it to look something like this, because then we can use our table of inverse Z transforms, or a table of Z transforms to find the inverse Z transform. So the question now is, how much is A and how much is B? And this now becomes a question of partial fractions. So we need to write our partial fractions expression, and that will look something like um, a times z minus b plus b to z minus a equals the numerator z. And if you take z equals a, then 
a will give you a divided by a minus b. And if you take z equals b, to cause this term to be equal to zero, then b will be b divided by b minus a. So now we've found the constants a and b. I can now write my expression for f of z as a times z over z minus small a plus b times z divided by z minus b. Now I haven't put the values or the expressions for uppercase a, b, and lowercase a and b in yet. I will do that in a minute, but just to keep things simple, we can now use the table of z transforms to find the, um, the expression for f of n. Now, we know from the table of uh, z transforms that the z transform of a to the power n u of n is z over z minus a. So this part here, z over z minus a, and z over z minus b is simply an exponential function. So I can now write my inverse z transform, f lowercase of n, as a times a to the power n times u of n plus b times lowercase b to the power n times u of n. Now that doesn't look like the expression we've been given in the question, but it's not far away because once we've plugged in the values for a and b uppercase and a and b lowercase, um, this will probably um, start looking much closer to what it looks like in the question. So I can write this out as a over a minus b times a, which is one plus, well, I'll leave, I'll leave it as a for now, a to the power n, um, u of n to see if it simplifies at all. So b over b minus a times b to the power n times u of n. Now you notice how these denominators are almost the same. So with a minus sign here, they will be identical. So I can say that this is one over a minus b times, now you have these a's multiplied together and these b's multiplied together. So the powers add up. So we have a to the power n plus one. And that positive sign then becomes a negative sign because of the b minus a. And then b to the power n plus one. And all of that is multiplied by our unit step. Now, a minus b, I can simplify that, I think. Let's, let's write a minus b. So a minus b is equivalent to 1 plus square root of 5 over 2 minus 1 minus square root of 5 over 2. And that should give me, so if we write it, the long way, it'll look like this. And that will give you square root of 5. So 1 over a minus b will be 1 over square root of 5, which can be rationalized, or the denominator can be rationalized to be simply square root of 5 over 5. So we can now write f of n, maybe our final step, as 1 over a minus b, which is now root 5 over 5, 
multiplied by, now I'm going to replace a with 1 plus root 5 over 2. So that's going to be 1 plus root 5 over 2 to the power n plus 1 plus b, I'm going to replace it with 1 minus root 5 over 2 to the power n plus 1. And all of that is then, or should that be a minus? Uh, yes, that should have been a minus there. Um, and then, and not to forget multiplication by the unit step. And if we look closely, that matches, it's identical to what they asked us to find in the question. So. Remember back in the question, it should, said, show that the general expression can be expressed as, and we've now done that. So the trick was to use the Z-transform and the inverse Z-transform. There was a bit of partial fractions and factorization and manipulation involved, but in the end, that's how we find the expression for the nth term for the Fibonacci sequence.